and welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to talk about why your dog is ignoring you or not listening to you and what you can do about it. If you ever feel like your dog is testing you or trying to get back at you or just trying to get you mad, I want you to know that I definitely know what that feels like and I've experienced it. I think every dog owner has but it is really just not true. Your dog is not doing that, even though it may feel like it. I know that it can be really frustrating and I've been really frustrated and you just don't know why your dog isn't listening. You know that they should know this command or they should know this word and they do it in other situations or they've done it before, but they're just not doing it now. And you just don't understand why. The first thing you need to know is that your dog is really just trying to communicate with you, or your dog simply doesn't hear you. It may seem like your dog is ignoring you, but they aren't really. It is really important to remember, especially in the moment when you are feeling angry or frustrated, or even embarrassed if you're in front of other people or if you're at the park or somewhere where other people can see you and you may feel like they're watching you or judging you. In that moment, it's important to remember that your dog is not trying to disobey you or make you angry. Your dog is not trying to give you a hard time. Instead, they are having a hard time. Your dog is just as frustrated, just as angry as you are. Your dog is just as overwhelmed and maybe scared or just feeling anxiety. So you need to just be empathetic and understanding and know that your dog is having a hard time, not giving you a hard time. Your dog is trying to communicate to you and they're doing it in the only way that they know how. In fact, they have most likely already communicated to you what they're trying to say in subtle ways, in ways that you didn't notice or ways that you weren't aware of. And they've come to the point where they just really act out in behaviors that make you notice, that you have to attend to. Your dog also may be incapable of hearing you or unable to understand you. One reason that your dog may be ignoring you or may seem to be, appear to be ignoring you is that your dog is distracted. Dogs have a sense of smell that is way more powerful than ours, 10,000 to 100,000 more times more powerful than our sense of smell. They also have a sense of hearing that is more powerful, around four times more acute than our sense of hearing. So they have a lot of information, they're picking up a lot of stimulus that we don't even notice there and aren't aware of at all. So if you're at a busy park or an environment that is unusual or that you don't go to often, and there's a lot going on, especially if there's a lot of things that your dog is unfamiliar with going on, your dog is absorbing a lot and they're probably distracted. They probably can't hear you. Your dog's attention may be on all the other interesting sights, smells, sounds, your dog may be excited, over aroused, overwhelmed, which is especially true in environments that are unusual or different that your dog doesn't frequent often or hasn't in a long time. Another reason that your dog may appear to be ignoring you is that they are frustrated or overtired or feeling uncomfortable, whether that's anxious, scared, shy, they're just not feeling like themselves. You can tell if your dog is stressed by looking at their body language. Some signs of stress or just feeling uncomfortable are when your dog licks their lips. If they're looking away from you, their eyes don't want to make contact and they have a lot of white in their eye. If your dog is yawning or scratching, pay attention to their body language for these signs. Often, if you watch their body language, you will be able to realize that they're feeling uncomfortable before it gets out of hand. And you can make the appropriate changes or you can catch your dog when they can, are still able to hear you and listen to you before it goes too far. When your dog shows signs of stress or frustration, you know that it is time to remove your dog from the situation or do what you can to ensure that your dog feels safe and calm and comfortable. The most important thing to do at all times, not just in these kinds of situations, is to ensure that your dog feels safe, that your dog feels calm. What can you do in that moment to ensure that your dog 
is feeling safe and can feel calm, can self-regulate? How can you help your dog feel safer? Also pay attention to how you yourself are feeling in the moment. If you're frustrated, if you're angry, if you're scared, your dog will be as well. Dogs mirror our emotions and they pick up on our energies and we are really a model and a guide for how our dog behaves and how they are feeling. So whatever we are feeling internally, our dog most likely is feeling that way as well. So in that moment, if you are frustrated or angry, your dog is as well. When your dog feels uncomfortable, vulnerable, or unheard, their behaviors will escalate from a whisper to a scream, similar to a toddler or a child or even ourselves. When we feel that we're not being heard, we make ourselves louder and our dogs do this. Another reason your dog may appear to be ignoring you is that your dog doesn't understand what you want them to do. They don't understand what you are trying to communicate with them. In this case, it doesn't make sense to repeat the word or the command again and again. Our voices will just become meaningless noise to our dogs and probably add to their their anger and their frustration as well as ours. So if we give a command and our dog ignores it, there is no need to repeat it again and again. Often we tend to become louder or more aggressive and maybe shout the commands at our dogs, which just escalates the whole situation. The more you repeat a command, the more meaningless it becomes. Dogs mainly communicate with their body language, and we can miss out on their nonverbal cues when we are constantly giving them commands. So think of it as a conversation. You need to also be listening, not just talking. So how can you prevent from getting to the point where your dog just isn't listening and appears to be ignoring you? Always put your relationship with your dog first. We have to respect our dogs as sentient beings, meaning that they are able to feel emotions. Dogs are able to perceive and to feel emotion and become aware that that thoughts, emotions, beliefs, actions, they all influence our dogs. So when we are in the situation where we find that we are triggered, we are frustrated, or our dogs are triggered and our dogs are frustrated, most likely both of us are, the first thing we need to do is take a pause, take a deep breath, and reconnect to our dogs. So we want to be able to have that strong relationship built on trust and understanding, on communication, to be able to reconnect with our dogs, to be able to become aware in the moment that we are feeling frustrated or that our dog is feeling frustrated and not listening and instead of escalating that or becoming angry with our dogs to take a deep breath pause and try to connect back to our dogs connecting back with our dogs does not mean we yell commands at them but we just recenter ourselves and calm ourselves down and focus on why our dog is triggered, why our dog is upset, and try to help our dogs feel safe and calm in the moment. Because trying to get them to act a certain way will not work when they are already too triggered, too over aroused, too past the point of not being able to hear us or understand us. And if we feel that our dog is ignoring us, that means that they are past that point and we've gone too far. We want to be able to bring our dogs back into our awareness and us in their awareness before they get to that point. The more we do this, the more often we will be aware of the triggers and know our dogs and know when they are in a situation that will push them to that point. We need to become more mindful and more aware of what triggers our dogs so that we can prevent the escalation. We need to talk in steady tone and in a patient and a loving way with encouragement and appreciation for our dogs. That's when our dogs will pay attention to us and remain connected to us. Have empathy with our dogs and understand that they are having a hard time. We have to remember to not take things personal. This doesn't mean that we are a bad dog owner or a dog mom. We have to remember that dogs are not robots and we have to see things from our dog's perspectives. We teach our dogs by example. 
dogs really learn socially so they learn from us and they are really in tune and aware of emotions so they learn from us when to be angry and be frustrated so we have to become really aware with what's going on with our emotions to be a good guide and role model for our dogs and be aware of when we are angry or frustrated because our dogs will pick up on that and they will act out in ways that cause more anger and more frustration. Dogs learn by example. If you want your dog to be patient and calm, you need to be patient and calm. If you want your dog to be responsive to you, you need to be responsive to your dog. Pay attention to their body language before they get too upset and escalate. Remember that your dog is not giving you a hard time, but your dog is having a hard time. It is also important to give your dog a job. All dogs like to feel important. All social animals, which dogs are very social animals, they like to feel that they have a purpose and a sense of belonging, that they're contributing to the family, to the household. Their job can be something really simple, like providing you with joy and laughter, or cuddling you on the couch, or bringing love and peace into the home. Let your dog know their job, and when they do it, if they make you laugh and their job is to bring joy into the household, show gratitude towards your dog. Express gratitude to them. Give your dog little jobs like clean up their toys. You can train them, make it into a game, but they feel like they have a purpose. If you don't give your dog a purpose or a job or something to do, they will find one on their own, which probably won't be something that you enjoy. It'll probably be like barking out the window all day at anyone who passes by or tearing out the garbage and destroying things in the home. Giving dogs a job, any breed of dog, not just working dogs, all breeds, all dogs, giving them a job fosters responsibility, self-regulation, and self-awareness, which will help in situations where your dog is feeling overwhelmed or where there's a lot of stimulation and in situations where they often will become distracted or anxious or aggressive in those situations where previously you would have felt that your dog wasn't ignoring you and wasn't hearing you. Remember to go slow, be patient, give your dogs time to process information and stimulation because as I mentioned in the beginning, our dogs see the world a lot differently than us and sometimes different environments or situations can be very overwhelming. Give them time to observe or sit and think things through. Don't rush them or push them into new situations or environments too quickly. Let them process, let them react, let them enjoy the moment. Also, make sure your dog is getting enough sleep. Dogs need a lot of sleep and a lot of rest. If your dog went to agility in the morning, don't take them to the vet in the afternoon. If both of those situations are highly exciting or highly arousing or overstimulating for your dog, space things out. Dogs need a lot more rest than most people give them, even working dogs and highly active or hyper dogs. They need a lot of rest and a lot of sleep and just time to recharge. Dogs that don't get enough sleep and are overtired are often dogs that are over aroused and overstimulated by busy situations or new environments or dog parks and when things are a lot, when there's a lot going on, a lot of smells and sights and sounds, dogs that are overtired will react in ways that can be difficult for us to handle. Dogs that are overtired or overstimulated, these are often the reasons that they seem to be ignoring you or can't hear you or just aren't listening to you. Become really aware of your surroundings and your dog's body language and know what kinds of situations will trigger your dog or over arouse your dog. Pay attention to the signs and know when you are more likely to lose your dog's attention and notice the signs that you are about to lose your dog's attention so that you can take some preventative action before it happens. Get to know your dog. All dogs are different depending on breed, age, personality, and temperament. Some dogs can be off leash at a dog park and handle that very well. Some dogs cannot. Know what type of dog 
your dog is and pick environments and situations. Put your dog in places where they will succeed. Know what they can handle and what they can't. And get to know their signs of when they are feeling nervous or overstimulated, anxious or fearful and know what you can do to calm them down. You want to be the source of safety and trust for your dog. You want to be able to provide your dog with that calming energy. It's important to know yourself that you can do whatever is needed to be able to calm your dog down in any situation. When you know that, your dog will know that and your dog will keep connected to you and always be checking in on you and looking to you for guidance or support when they are feeling that there's just too much going on when they're feeling overwhelmed. And this type of relationship or really this partnership with a dog only happens when it is built on trust. So one of the most important things is to form a relationship with your dog that is built on trust. To form this kind of partnership, spend a lot of time with your dog. And when you spend time with your dog, when you take your dog anywhere or do any activity with your dog, Put your dog's feelings of safety first. When your dog feels safe and when your dog knows that you will always provide safety to them, they will really trust you and always be connected to you, checking in on you. Provide calming experiences and activities that you and your dog go through together. Your dog will also really trust you when you Pay attention to their body language and get to know how they are communicating with you so that you can take action and help your dog out when you notice that they are feeling uncomfortable before they get way too uncomfortable. If your dog is not paying attention and appears to be ignoring you, then you've missed a lot of signals and that's okay if you get there, it happens to everyone and we can't always be 100% attentive on our dog, but when we keep their safety and calmness and their happiness in mind, we know what kind of situations and environments are right for our dogs and what they can handle. And just because they can't handle it now doesn't mean that they will never be able to handle it. If right now you really want to be able to take your dog to the park or take your dog out with you to a restaurant and sit beside you while you eat and you know your dog can't handle that right now, doesn't mean that they will forever be like that. But it means that for now, you need to place yourself and your dog in situations where your dog does feel comfortable. And the more often they get used to feeling comfortable and safe and calm and happy, you will be able to take them in situations where in the past they may have been over aroused and couldn't pay attention to you and were just acting wild and where you've started to feel embarrassed and frustrated and angry with your dog, that won't happen anymore because you will have this partnership and connection with your dog. I hope this video was helpful and you have some understanding on why your dog may be ignoring you and what you can do about it, how to prevent it, and just a little more insight into your dog. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!